Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with the circuits about transistors and in this case we start with the first example of the MOSFET circuit. In this case we will look at a specific type which is the N-channel enhancement type of the MOSFET and the structure of this MOSFET here is shown here in 2D configuration and the symbol is also shown here. We will dive into more detail about the circuit analysis shortly. Of course we will work out everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have the circuit here given. We have three resistors, R1, R2 and RD. This is called the drain resistance. We have the MOSFET here, which is an N-channel MOSFET. It's also called, called the E-MOSFET for enhancement. And we have also the VDD, which is the DC voltage source. The values are shown here. So we can see the values of this resistor and the DC voltage source. For this N-channel E-MOSFET, we have the following parameters. The threshold voltage, which is the VTH, is 2.1 volt. This is the similar parameter as the pinch of voltage for the JFET. In addition, we have the conduction parameter, which is the KN, is equal to 34.2 milliamps per square volts. This is a process parameter. It depends on the geometry, but also on the MOSFET itself. So it is uh, sort of a parameter where the designers can use to uh, work for a specific current in the MOSFET circuit. Okay, what we want is the calculation of the drain current, the gate to source voltage and the drain source voltage. The drain current is here, which is the same as the source current because it is symmetric and the gate current is zero. We also have the gate source, which is here and drain source voltage is here. Okay. We assume for the MOSFET that the MOSFET is operating in the saturation region. That means actually when you discuss and use the MOSFET circuits, it is actually called a linear region of operation where the current is constant. Because the BGT operation, we call the saturation region when there is no linear region anymore. And this is in, the, in, in this case for this specific MOSFET circuits, it is called the linear region when you talk about saturation region. So it is a little bit confusing, but you need to be very careful also in the literature where they talk about the saturation region, it means actually a linear region. But when you have the BGT, it means really the saturation region, which is not linear. Anyways, let's call it linear region. That is, I think, easier to understand the differences. Okay, let's look at the solutions. Uh, we start with the first, the simplest one, which is the voltage node G. And then we can use the voltage divide rule in this branch using this VDD. That's shown here. So R2 over R1 plus R2 times VDD. Now if I substitute the values given here, we get 4 volts. So we know this voltage here at this node, with respect to ground, must be 4 volts. But that means VGS, which is also from this node to ground effectively, is also VG. So VGS also VG, which is then 4 volts. Now for our assumption, we have several conditions. One of them is that the threshold voltage, so the VGS, must be larger than the threshold voltage. So this voltage must be larger than 2.1 volts, which is the case here. We didn't know yet beforehand. We assume, just assumed that and we see that it is indeed the case. There's also a second condition that the VDS here must be larger than the VGS minus the threshold voltage. That means the VDS we have we shall calculate it shortly must be larger than the 4 minus 2.1, which means what, larger than 1.9 volts. That's also the check we need to make. That's, these are the two conditions we need to check. Okay, so we say this assumption is correct until now. So we can say this is a correct, a valid solution. Okay, the next one is the drain current that will be given by this expression, which is the square law of expression. You can see the square uh, relationship between the parameter of the voltage, VGS, and also the current here, ID. Now we see here parameters of the MOSFET, KN, also the threshold voltage, and VGS. So we need for this formula, for the ID, the VGS. So we already calculated that, so we can just substitute the values also from the conduction parameter given for this N-channel E MOSFET. You substitute the values here, you get 123.462 milliamps. Now the purpose that I give this very accurately in this form is that I will also exactly show you that this is indeed correct in the simulator. So that's the reason for having this accuracy here. Now the next one and the final one is a drain 
source voltage, which is this voltage. Now for that we can make a loop here, which is the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So KVL at the output loop. Now this VDD is equal to the voltage across RD plus the voltage VDS. That's shown here. So I will use automatically the ohms law here, so ID times the RD. That's shown here. Now we can, if we move on, we can say I would like to know the VDS, then we can express this equation as shown. We know VDD, we know RD, we also know the ID, we just calculated here. So if I now substitute the values here, we will get 7.654 volts. So we have everything. We have the drain current, we have the gate to source voltage, we have the drain to source voltage. Everything is shown here as we wanted from our example. Now, the stimulation results, that's the next step. This is also important, so let's verify this. This is the circuit I have drawn in the SPI simulator. This is a symbol that is used in the TINA TI spice, but we use it when we draw the circuit here. We use this symbol. There is actually a more simplified uh, symbol. This arrow shows that this is a source, and if it is if this arrow is going out of this, let's say this vertical bar, that means it is a N channel. If it is going in, there will be a P channel. So I will also discuss that in another video. So we have here this symbol, so if you see that this arrow is going in actually, so it's kind of a confusing maybe, but we have also this, so it is making sort of a different symbol here, but if this is going in for this configuration, then it is an N channel, if it's going out, there will be a P channel, but you get used to it when you use this uh, symbol in circuits, and most of the time you will use this, but you can have it in the literature, or maybe your simulator as shown here. Okay, what well we have R1, R2, RD, and also the VDD. We also see the ID here, and IS is exact same as ID, so this is also exact same as ID as shown here. We saw also the VDS, that's the voltage across the D and the source, or the drain and the source, and the gated source also uh, measured here. Now, we see here, the current is correct, exactly as we have calculated. You can see that here. The drain to source voltage also, and also the gate to source voltage. We also see that the gate current is almost 4 femtoamps, amps, very small. So it is not exactly zero, but we can just assume that's zero. This current here, I want here in this branch, is 160 microamps. That can be calculated very easily by doing 20 volts over the 125 kilo ohms. You will get this 160 microamps. Okay, now we have to write this, uh, these values in our simulator. But the important thing is, we would like to know how we can substitute this threshold voltage and also the conduction parameter in our SPICE model for this MOSFET. Let's bring up this uh, screen, this is important. When you open the TINA TI SPICE, you will get the, let's say, the generic symbol for this N channel enhancement MOSFET. Then you can click on level one, this is called the level one MOSFET uh, model or Shishman Hodge model. You can take the no name and then fill in here the threshold voltage you want. That is 2.1 in our case. And the beta here is the SPICE, this is the threshold voltage or the pinch of voltage. But this one, the SPICE parameter, this one uh, shown in uh, red, is actually called beta, but it is also called the KP, which is the actual SPICE parameter in the literature. But what is KP? What is beta? Okay, the KN, what we wanted, or what is given, is KP over 2 times the W over L. W is the width of your MOSFET, so it is the width and the length of the MOSFET also. That by default, these are, uh, by the way, we need it for this uh, expression, the KN. W and the L are by default 10 micro meters, so 10 to the power minus 5 and 10 to the power minus 5. So that means these, the ratio here is just 1. So effectively I have Kn is equal to Kp over 2, or Kp is equal to 2 times Kn. This is important, this step is really important, because now we can say the Kp, which we want to input in here, or insert in here, the type in here, is 2 times the Kn you would like to use in your example which is now 34.2. That means I need to double that, that's then 68.4 milliamps per square volts. So the KP is indeed, that's the beta, in this case called beta, so I have this in here. So the model 
here has 2.1 for the threshold and 68.4 milliamps for the beta, which is the KP spice parameter. All right, now this is now all checked. Let's also see that how we can make this in this actual spice simulator so that you also see how you can click on it and adjust the balance because you see all of them are zero here because you do need to do that by yourself because lambda is that channel length modulation there are some drain resistance gate resistance etc and capacitors and so terminal coefficients you can make them all zero to get to the actual let's say the ideal situation because the formula here is only valid for ideal situations and not for channel length modulation or other temperature effects so let's now jump to the spy simulator and see how we can insert these values in the model there right now we are here in the spice simulator you can see the circuit here r1 r2 the resistor and id and you also can see the gate current measurement here the source current measurement the drain current measurement etc now it is easy to place the resistors and the current arrows and also the voltmeters to measure the current and the volts but it is important to place the right or the specific model for your MOSFET. This is the MOSFET. Let me delete that and to show you how that is going because let me get it back to see what it is. So this is the model I have used, but I will make it now for you from scratch. So let me get it out. You go to semiconductor, so it's basics. You have the resistor, the capacitor, etc. You go to the semiconductor, you go to the NMOS, which is the N-channel MOSFET and enhancement types. You see the PMOS, NMOS, you have the J fans, N channel, P channel, you have also the bipolar, etc. So all the semiconductors, diodes, etc. are all shown here. Also the ideal and the operational amplifiers. So let's go to NMOS, enhancement type. You click on it. Let's bring it here. Okay, you see, if, if I click it for the first time, by the way, I've done it before, but then you get this symbol level three and you get the first one this is what you actually normally get so you get t1 which is called t1 and you get this symbol 2n76 6755 uh, that is a type of the mosfet and channel enhancement okay we want a very specific model which is the level one model you go here three dots here you go to the spice level one but or you can get the shishman hodge model which is a more compact a more simple model you click on that one you go to no name in this case you clicked here the 2.1 which we wanted for our threshold this is a threshold voltage the beta was kappa a uh, kp i mean and kp was a double of that 34.2 milliamps per square volts that means i need to double that means then 68.4 milli okay and I don't want any lambda because that's for the channel length modulation that goes. No drain resistance, no gate resistance, no source resistance. I don't want any capacitors, no thermal coefficient, etc. Let's keep this coefficient for the flicker noise just one. You can also make it zero, doesn't have any effect. So this is what we have and also what we have showed you. So the actual, this one is correct. This is also correct. These are important. So let's click OK. Let's also call this M1 label. And all in addition, you can also click this or uncheck this so you don't see the no name in this uh, symbol so you only see the m1 so if i uncheck that so it, there's no no name anymore so this is m1 let me bring it here this is the n channel enhancement type mosfet now let's go and place it here okay now i have everything the resistor everything is correct let's now go to analysis dc analysis and then calculate no voltages what we see these are the results that's all we can see these are exactly the calculations what we have and also the presentation showed these values but if i change that most model this will also change you can see the effect it's not a coincidence so let's see what happens if i go to the model again and let's make this for example threshold not 2.1 for example 2.5 so i will change that let's see what happens so you see the current is changing the uh, the current by the way here exact same for the drain and source this is still very really small this is still four volts doesn't matter what kind of a threshold voltage this is this is still four volt because that really determines by this is determined by this voltage division and this dc voltage source this is changed because the current here or the i mean the drain current is reduced because the threshold voltage is going up 
So from that square law uh, expression, you can see that the drain current is going down. If the drain current is going down, the voltage drop across RD is going down. That means I need I have more VDS. So really logical everything. I can again get back and then set it original 2.1 and maybe make this larger. Let's say uh, 100. What do you get? You get then more current because it was then multiplied by this uh, Kn or this two times the uh, Kn. So let's see again redo the you see that it is now 180 and now this is almost 1.5 uh, 1.9 almost 2 volts so but then there's one, one important thing this is almost at the edge coincidence by the way because this is now 4 volts and the 2.1 was our, our uh, threshold voltage so i need the vds which is then larger than the vgs minus the threshold which is 1.9 so this is at the edge if i now go over that let's see what happens so if i now make it a bit larger so i make it the current larger so let's let's make this 120 let's see what's happening so this goes down and now we have this and it is going actually now even lower so then that square law condition is not valid anymore so we can work it out in more detail for yourself and see that this is indeed not correct Right guys, this is the for this example about the MOSFET using the level 1 SPICE model for this like a specific end channel enhancement MOSFET type. We will continue in the next video about a more complicated MOSFET circuit, again end channel. In the future videos, later videos, we will also talk about the P channel MOSFETs. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer that as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.